Inside Michigan Basketball is presented by Meyer. It's happened again. Early Saturday morning, Michigan's rivalry game against Michigan State postponed due to COVID-19 protocols within the Wolverine program. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Inside Michigan Basketball. That's now seven games the past two seasons impacted by COVID-19, either canceled or postponed. Look, no one wanted it to come to this. It's the highlight of the schedule each year. And to learn more about that decision, here's Kurt Svoboda, Michigan Athletics Director of Communications. We've seen quite a few changes in policies and procedures across NCAA programs, conferences, decisions coming down from, uh, from the NCAA uh, as this latest wave of COVID has affected uh, pretty much all corners of the world, certainly college and, and professional athletics. A lot of conferences have changed uh, what was on the books in terms of uh, being able to compete forfeits versus postponements and they really looked at uh, a shift in policy and the Big Ten is no different and so it was a few weeks ago uh, that the Big Ten had changed its policies uh, and, and revised for all sports what that could look like going forward. That being said, as of Friday afternoon, the game was still on. Jawan even held a Zoom news conference to preview the contest, and he talked about his great admiration for Spartans coach Tom Izzo. Coach Izzo is a Hall of Fame coach. I mean, it's documented. He's had, what, over 27 years as a head coach, won a national championship, you know, won, I can't count how many Big Ten championships, and, um, and yes, you know, that's the type of guy who you look at and you say, wow, you know, uh, he's had a lot of success and how he's done it has been, you know, remarkable. Um, and I'm a young coach and my third year in and um, I want to grow and, and look at some of those same successes as Coach Izzo. Uh, but at the same time, you know, like he touched on um, this rivalry, it's uh, respectful in a lot of ways. Um, and I've always been taught by my grandmother, respect your elders. But at the same time, when it comes to competition, you know, I've, I don't look at age. I don't look at, you know, who that individual is. I just look at the opponent. And don't forget, their relationship goes back a long way because Tom Izzo recruited Joan Howard to Michigan State once upon a time. We now bring in Brian Bush, the radio voice of the Michigan Wolverines. And Brian, it stings that this happened, period. But the fact it happened in a rivalry game kind of stings a little more, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I mean, this is one of the most anticipated games of the season. Every time you get your schedule, you look to see when does Michigan play Michigan State? And more importantly, when does Michigan host Michigan State? You hear it from Coach Howard all the time. This is a program that is for competitors only. You know this team wanted to go out there and compete on Saturday. It just didn't work out with the COVID protocols, and, and you just hope that everyone's okay. You mentioned Coach Howard, and the one thing that's been consistent through this less than ideal start, shall we say, at seven and six, is his constant positivity trying to lift these guys up. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, this has been a difficult stretch. They've lost back-to-back -back games for the first time since the late stages of Coach Howard's first season here in Ann Arbor. This is a young team. I think everyone in the program knew that out of the gates. Maybe it took a while for people outside to really realize that, but it's tough to bury young players. It's tough to bury a young team. This is a competitive schedule. This is a challenging Big Ten. So I understand why it'd be easy to just say, oh, well, why can't he spark a fire under this team? But sometimes you have to do it with that positive approach, and, and that's kind of Coach Howard's MO. You mentioned this young team, this young roster. How unfair is it maybe at times that people expect so much so soon from some of these guys because they're still kids? Yeah, I mean, this is what happens when you have such a, a well-covered recruiting side. When you see those stars next to players' names, you see the rankings next to Michigan's class as a whole, they're not fully formed student athletes. They're not fully formed players. And you're going up against some fourth, fifth, even sixth year players in and around the Big Ten. So. Yes, there are high expectations for this program, but it does take some time. You got six scholarship freshmen, four scholarship sophomores. That's not easy. Let's talk briefly about Tuesday's game at Rutgers, the Scarlet Knights beating the Wolverines for the first time ever. Just talk about that game a little bit 
in a game they played shorthanded. Yeah, it was definitely tough. Really, only six rotation players. He had the starting five, Kobe Bufkin, and that was pretty much it. They fell into an early hole. I thought they found some footing in that second half. They made it close. But the challenge for this team has been their work at the three-point line, both offensively and defensively. Rutgers hit their threes. Michigan just didn't. Brian Bush, radio voice of the Wolverines. We certainly hope we will see you Tuesday at Chrysler when the Boilermakers are in town. Fingers crossed, Ed. Still to come, our Elro Steel Man of the Week traveled a long way to become a Wolverine. And speaking of long distances, wait until you hear the story of a women's player who was kept out of the country for almost a year by the pandemic. Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you in part by Meyer official sponsor of Michigan Athletics and proud sponsors of local sports teams across the Midwest. Time for this week's Elro Steel Man of the Week. Welcome back everyone. Freshman Musa Diabate has a very unique story. Raised in Paris, didn't start playing basketball till he was 12 and came to the U.S. at age 14. Earlier this week, he told me he feels like he's improving every single day. Even now, months after arriving on campus and playing more than a dozen games, Musa Diabate still has wow moments about being at Michigan. I was going by the gym and I was just like, man, like I still can't believe I'm at Michigan right now. It's, it's, just, it's, just, it's just great. Uh, not a lot of people get that opportunity and I, I get the chance to get coached by an NBA player, an uh, ancient NBA player, and he's great and we have a great coaching staff. Musa is averaging almost nine points and six rebounds per game, shooting at a 59% clip. He owns a fundamental intangible all great players tend to possess, a thirst for knowledge. I believe that is on um, it is uh, really big. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like a, a kid. I feel like in that sense, uh, I always ask questions. Um, and even when I, I'm, I'm kind of a stubborn person, I ain't gonna lie, but um, it's definitely, I'm definitely, I definitely say that's a positive thing about me. Uh, I always trying to find out, learn, and especially because I love basketball, I always want to be the best. Musa told us during preseason camp, he envisions himself as an all around player, and he certainly made an impact at both ends of the floor. Laid it up and swatted by Diabate out of bounds. Around the Diabate hedge, go alley, you up to Diabate. If you had to choose, a big dunk or swatting a shot? What do you get most satisfaction out of? Oof, man. Uh, yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't answer to that, man, because I feel like, like I could get like really hype after like a, a crazy block, especially like down the stretch, and I could also get like really hype with a dunk, like dunking on somebody or something, um, down the stretch too. So you, you can't go either way, really. The Wolverines haven't fully produced the results they desire, but Diabate tells us why it's only a matter of time before they take off. This type of um, attributes that our players have and type of character that we have around us, I mean, around me at least, um, it just proves that everything. It just, it just shows that like, it's going it's to click at a certain point. We, we definitely going to make that, make that work. Wolverine fans certainly hope so. On the way, Michigan hockey adds an inspiring presence to the program, and up next, a player's twisting international journey to rejoin her maize and blue teammates. Welcome back to the show. New Year's Eve, the women blasted Ohio State 90 to 71, their largest margin of victory ever over the Buckeyes. Nas Hillman posted her 40th career double-double with 29 points and 15 rebounds. Leah Brown netted 9 of 12 field goals on her way to 24 points. And Emily Kaiser continued her stellar season with 15 and 18 in the score sheet. The win improved Michigan to 3-1 against AP Top 25 teams this season. Tuesday, they saw their five-game winning streak come to an end with a 79-58 loss at Nebraska. The Cornhuskers raced out to a 19-8 lead after one quarter and never trailed. Kaiser led four players in double digits with 13. It was Michigan's first conference loss of the season, dropping them to 12-2 overall. Here's Sarah Van Meter with more on the Wolverines. The pandemic has inflicted chaos on the world, and for one Wolverine, an international student athlete from Brazil, travel bans kept her away from Ann Arbor for nearly a year. I had a visa before that was for like two, uh, four years, 
So two years in high school and two years in college. And I had to renew my visa, so I went home once COVID started, and I had it scheduled for May already to have an appointment. And two weeks before the appointment, I received an email. Your visa appointment was canceled. And I'm like, wait, what? So I freak out. I'm like, this is not okay. Because due to COVID, all visas are being canceled. And I'm like, all right, okay, let's, let's get a new one. And then I schedule a new appointment. And two months later, they cancel it again. And I was like, what the heck is going on? So I call coach, I call everybody. I'm like, hey, like I'm struggling. I call like everyone. When I tell you everyone is like everyone. And then I schedule a new one and they cancel again. And at that point, I'm like hopeless. And everybody was saying the best option was going to a, to go to a third, third country so I could get a visa there. But all the countries are closed in Brazil because Brazil was in a really bad situation, so I couldn't even go anywhere because they were not accepting Brazilians. So I, I'm telling you, I filled out about 30 visa applications <laughs> for different countries, like Zimbabwe, like every country you can imagine, Jordan, uh, everywhere, like in the map, <laughs> every continent, I filled out a visa application. I was added to a WhatsApp group with like about 300 kids in the same situation as me. And a lot of them actually, bless their hearts, they lost, they lost their scholarships because it was a division two or a low division one that they couldn't hold their spots like Michigan can. So I feel really bad for them because there was like not priority for students. They were only considering emergency for doctors, not students that had to like get their lives together. Because they were saying, because your university is offering online, online courses, it's not necessary for you to be back in the US. But like, yes it is, I'm an athlete. <laughs> I need to get back. I filled out the application for Ecuador, went there. We were in quarantine, me and my mom, my mom actually invited me. We had to be in the country for 15 days before we had the appointment. So I was in Ecuador for 15 days. And then on the 15th day, I got my visa, which was the most relieving thing I've ever seen in my life, I ever experienced in my life. So it was really good to be back in the US. She then quarantined on North Campus before rejoining the team last February before the annual pink game against Ohio State. It was so heartwarming and seeing everyone and just feeling the atmosphere of being back and like, wow, like someone pinched me. I'm actually back. I, I was just away for 11 months, but when I got back, it felt like I never left. Isabel missed an entire season, not playing a competitive game for 18 months. After reflecting on her experience, she says it was all worth it. I already sacrificed so much. Why give up now? I feel like I don't want to make those years that I lost, quote unquote loss, be worthless. So I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get back. I'm gonna go through this and I'm gonna be okay. It's a hard time right now, but it's gonna all be worth it in the end. I'm not losing the opportunity to have a degree from Michigan. And there were a number of lessons learned. So I'm a very anxious person and I wanna get things done. It has to be like quick or I explode with anxiety. Uh, so I feel like I learned how to control that a little bit and, like, and know that it's not on my power what's gonna happen next, that it's a higher power and I have to understand it and accept it. and. Be patient. <laughs> it's going to be a busy week for the Wolverines, who host Rutgers on Sunday at noon, before heading to Penn State for a date with the Nittany Lions on Thursday. For Inside Michigan Basketball, I'm Sarah Van Meter. Thanks, Sarah. Up next, we're talking hockey. The defending national champions visit Yost Arena for the weekend. Friday afternoon, the Michigan hockey team welcomes 17-year-old Kellen O'Connell of Saginaw to their program. His inclusion made possible by Team Impact, which matches children with serious and chronic illness with college teams across the country. A huge sports fan, Kellen suffers from cerebral palsy and is being treated at Mott Children's Hospital. Team captain Nick Blankenberg led the initiative to sign him. We have been very fortunate uh, to uh, welcome Kellen uh, to our team. Uh, he's got a number, uh, he's part of our roster. You know, we're very fortunate, our group is, and we're very lucky. And I think it's important that any time we get an opportunity to brighten someone's day or to give back, uh, whatever we do, I think that, that's a good lesson for all of our guys and going forward, because they're, they're young too, and, and they, they don't sometimes fully understand how lucky and how, how good we have it here. So uh, we're excited to have Kellen aboard and uh, we hope to have a real successful year with him part of our roster. 
What a great story, and we're certainly looking forward to seeing Kellen around Yost Arena the rest of the season. On the ice, the Wolverines welcome defending national champ UMass to town for a two-game series. The two-game set, a Saturday-Sunday affair at Red Berenson Rink. Just 114 in, the Wolverines get on the board first. Kept in by Jack Summers. Here's Johnson. They score! That's Brisson's team leading 12th of the season. It was 1-1 after one. Plenty of Michigan chances in the second. None better than this. Johnny Beecher with a shorthanded breakaway, but denied by UMass goalie Matt Murray. Minutes later, Kent Johnson moves in. He waits and waits, but hits the iron echoing throughout the building. Goalie Eric Portillo stood tall behind a strong defensive effort, and remember that's something because he's six foot six. The young Swede made 28 saves. It was the same score after two. 7.59 of the third, Michigan forces a turnover in the neutral zone. Brisson with the gorgeous pass to Kent Johnson, who converts with ease. Number five for Johnson, two to one Wolverines. Just under four to play now, more defense to offense. Matty Beneers the swipe, and this one gets fun in a hurry. Johnson and Brisson with the two-man game, Brendan with the finish, giving him a baker's dozen for the year and a two-goal cushion. This is guy Justin Jefferson in the NFL, plays for the Vikings, you know. We get, we're really uh, really competitive with our fantasy football league all year. Garrett Van Wy actually just won the league. Congrats to him. But he does that uh, celebration after he scores. And, you know, I made a little bet back home with my friend. You know, next goal I was going to score, I would bring it out. And, uh, yeah, it was fun. So I definitely liked that celebration and glad I brought it to the ice. The boys loved it. And then karma in a good way for Beecher. After getting stopped on that breakaway, he gets on the score sheet with an empty netter. Four to one the final, the Wolverines open the 2022 portion of their schedule with an impressive win. Yeah, it's a good hockey game. Uh, obviously, there's a reason why they're the defending national champ. You can see uh, they play so hard and uh, you, you have to get everything you, uh, everything you get you have to earn against a team like that. And uh, I thought it was a real solid effort, uh, you know, right from our goaltender on out tonight. So we had a lot of guys show up and play hard. We had a good week in practice. Uh, I think the guys were excited to play uh, play this game tonight. Winning a game against, um, I mean, the defending national champions is huge. Um, we just got to kind of carry our momentum throughout uh, the rest of this weekend and then into the next. Uh, I mean, we're rolling right now. We played a really good game. We got all our guys back, so um, we're excited. It's just so exciting to be back, uh, back in front of Yost, you know, full crowd. And, uh, yeah, just, you know, definitely an easy game to get up for. And uh, obviously they're a good team, so, uh, yeah, it was a great game. Michigan was strong on both ends of the ice, flicking 41 shots on goal while holding the Minutemen to that single tally. One of our goals was trying to be the top five defensive team in the country, and uh, we weren't that the first half. So I've liked our the last two games since a break, since we've come back with a little bit more of a defensive mindset. We're gonna we're gonna create our offense. We're gonna get offense, but it's got to come off defense and. You know, I'm more impressed with that tonight. We had a mentality of getting pucks to the net and getting bodies to the net, and uh, you know, 40 shots is a lot. And uh, you know, I feel like we were all over the net the whole night, and we could have had more than four. And I think uh, defense leads to offense, and good offense leads to good defense too. So, uh, yeah, I definitely felt like we were in their zone a lot, and uh, obviously getting a lot of scoring chances could have scored more. So, yeah, it was a great effort. I thought guys like Garrett Van Way and Nolan Moyle and some of our you know older, stronger seniors. Uh, really did a nice job tonight and uh, had a good line. And then you throw Marcus Stoppa with those guys. That's a, that a big, strong line. I thought they played excellent tonight. We're back to wrap up the show after a short break. Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you in part by Meyer, official sponsor of Michigan Athletics and proud sponsors of local sports teams across the Midwest. Thursday night at Chrysler Center, the defending national champion women's gymnastics team christened the new season with a dominant win over number 15 Georgia. Led by senior Natalie Wojcik, who won the uneven bars, the balance beam, and the all around, the top ranked Wolverines posted the highest season opening score in program history as they begin the quest for back-to-back -back titles. 
That's our show, everybody. Thanks so much for being with us as we were forced to pivot a bit this week. Up next on the schedule for the Wolverines, Tuesday at home against Purdue, and then on the road Friday night against a very talented and dangerous Illinois team. We'll see you next time right here on Inside Michigan Basketball.